Today, we will be demonstrating how to use a gas pack anaerobic jar. Here with me today is Harrison Pilo, and my name is Brian Fernandez. A gas pack jar is used to cultivate anaerobic and microphilic bacteria easily and without expensive equipment. It can also be used while identifying unknown microorganisms as a differential testing method to determine the oxygen requirements needed for growth. Before we go into further detail, let's take a moment to discuss lab safety. In a microbiology classroom, you will most likely be using a gas pack to help identify an unknown microorganism. While working with any unknown microorganisms, it is a best practice to adhere to BSL-2 biosafety standards, and the minimum PPE required are closed-toed shoes, lab coats, gloves, and safety glasses, which are to be worn at all times. It's important to note that there are different types of anaerobic jar setups, but we will show you the method and materials based on the equipment provided in our lab and the instructions given in the lab manual. You'll first need a gas pack anaerobic jar and lid, a chemical gas generator packet. This particular packet contains sodium borohydride and sodium bicarbonate, an indicator strip. This one has reazarin indicator, which is pink in the presence of oxygen. A loading tray, which will be used to organize your plates inside the gas pack container. And lastly, a TSA or brewer's plate. And this will have been aseptically inoculated previously uh, before you get set up. A brewer's plate will sometimes be used during this procedure because it contains thioglycolate, which will protect anaerobes and microphiles from oxidizing prior to being placed in the anaerobic jar. When setting up a gas pack, you can place several plates inside the jar at a time, so proper labeling is going to be very important. To get started, we'll take our inoculated plate, this one is a TSA plate, and place it upside down into the loading tray. If you haven't already done so, now is a good time to unscrew and remove the lid off the jar, and then you will place the loading tray inside of the jar. This is also a good point to double check and make sure that all of the plates on the loading tray are loaded upside down. We'll then take our reazarin indicator strip and place it on the inside wall of the jar. You want to make sure that this remains visible as it will serve as the indicator for when the jar is void of all oxygen. As you know, reazarin is a indicator that is pink in the presence of oxygen. So when this indicator strip turns white, you will be assured that there is no oxygen left in the jar. And the last thing we will add is the chemical gas generator pack. This pack becomes activated once removed from the foil pouch and placed inside the jar. As mentioned earlier, this chemical gas generator contains sodium borohydrate and sodium bicarbonate, which will convert four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen into two molecules of H2O. You'll be able to observe this water condense on the inside wall of the jar. The jar is now ready to be sealed. Make sure to seal the jar tightly and ensure gas cannot get into or out of the gas pack. The entire gas pack will be placed into the incubator at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. For demonstration purposes, we have left this container outside of the incubator to observe the chemical reaction as it takes place. You can see here as we speed it up, over the course of about an hour, water vapor quickly condenses on the inside of the container. Because of the moisture inside, it is important to place the plates upside down to avoid contamination from condensation. After the incubation period has completed and you have verified the reazarin indicator strip has turned from pink to white, you can then analyze the growth on your plate to help determine your microorganism's oxygen requirements. Here is a sample of a brewer's plate that has been inoculated with four different unknown microorganisms. You can see that organism HP11 at the top did not grow well in the anaerobic jar and suggests that this is an obligate anaerobe, while the three other unknown microorganisms grew well under the same conditions, which could mean they are obligate anaerobes, facultative anaerobes, or aerotolerant anaerobes.